me this adventure? You've never seen anything like this. Welcome to a place where kids will build, explore, and discover that they were made by the ultimate creator. God, this is Maker Fun Factory. shows kids what a unique and wonderful creation they are. Everything's so hands-on, even the decorations. We got to make the snacks and even invent our own games. That was so much fun. This totally helps kids discover that they were intentionally created, that God has a really big plan for their life. I like seeing the kids that were inventors. It's great to see kids' imaginations running wild. I've never been to anything like this it's amazing to think of the change this is going to have on kids as they go back to their daily lives. They'll live differently, knowing that God created them and has a purpose for their life. I can't wait to come back again. Good morning. Welcome to Live in Wesleyan this morning. We're glad to have you here. Um, I wanted to kind of promote PBS. It's uh, now that we're through Easter or Christmas or whatever it was last week there, if you were there, you're understand that joke. <laughs> um, I screw up, but anyways, uh, oh, I am nervous this morning. <laughs> it's shaking. And BBS, it's exciting. Um, couple, it's only a couple months away. That's, that's the reality of the thing, but it all starts with this can and uh, that promo, and uh, if you're interested at all in helping out, if you're a first-time person wanting help out, please join us. Um, come to me, see Amy, Myself um, and we will. Uh, we're gearing up to a, an in, initial meeting here, probably May 10th. We're looking at so uh, mark your calendars for that. And uh, there's already talk and work and stuff going on for DBS, which is July 10th through the 14th. So mark your calendars for that. Begin now to pray about it mainly, uh, first of all. And uh, again, if you're interested at all in helping out, if you're new to us. Uh, we couldn't plug you in somewhere, and uh, we had new faces helping out last year. We want to continue and, and do the same. Um, we're looking at, at doing a little bit things a little bit differently, and uh, just building on what what we already do. So, uh, join us for Maker Fun Factory this uh, this year. And if you see anything in your garage that might help out in props, we're already starting to think you know outside the box here that you're going to throw in a dumpster. That's a gear. That's a fan blade. That's a light rim or something. Bring it in. Jason's going to convert it all to something <laughs> decorative up here. So. It's a no pressure. So instead of throwing it out, bring it here. We're going to paint it bright colors and whatever. So just be thinking now for what, how we can uh, just uh, show God's love through Vacation Bible School this year. Um, and again, this week, our youth groups are meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday. And Awakened is this Saturday at the school. Uh, contact the bond for more information on that. Doors open at 845, but that's a big community event too. And we want to promote that. So the 29th this Saturday at the school at 10, uh, 10 to 3. So I believe that's pretty much all the announcements. Uh, one other thing, the annual church, church conference, we're going to do a little differently this year. We're going to do it on Sunday, uh, May 7th. That's the start of the, uh, the new church year. So uh, we're going to have one service on that day, the 930 service, and uh, with the intent of the conference, uh, uh, meeting at uh, 10 30 right after that meeting. So, wow, I am like shaking this morning. <laughs> I'm I'm down yes, yeah, up here. And a children's church meeting on May 4th. So, mark your calendars for that. Grab your bulletin and, and plug in everything else there. I believe that's all the announcements. Um, uh, so, I kind of calm down. I don't know what's going on. Take a breath. Take a breath. Okay, let's stand together as we pray. And, Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the excitement uh, uh, from last week, from Resurrection Sunday, God, and just your blessing and your pouring out of your blessings to us, God, and uh, those that come out to hear your word and to, uh, to worship you that day. And uh, God, we pray for this day, uh, this, the bright sunshine, the promise of spring-like temperatures, God, we thank you for that. And God, just uh, fill our hearts with what you would have for us this day. Bless each uh, uh, part of this service. We give it to you. We pray in thy name. Amen.
As we celebrated last week, um, our Redeemer lives. You know, we, we don't serve um, someone that died. We don't serve a memory of someone. Um, we serve a risen Savior. And, uh, you know, he loves us, and he can work in situations. It's not like we can think of, you know, how great he was back then. Um, he can work now on everything we're going through. And uh, that's just an amazing thing that we have uh, that no one else has.
know, my mom is really stricken with arthritis quite bad. But even though she is, she says, I'm in so much pain. Yet she says, you know, God is good. She said, we just got to give everything to him. And for someone to be so, you know, struggling with pain, to have a good thing to say is always a positive thing. And my mom is a loving lady, but at the age of 89, you know, sometimes she can be ornery. <laughs> so I try to be as patient as I can with her. I love her to death. Well, I don't mean that. <laughs> um, but our parents are special. And always let your parents know that there's somebody very special.
know, we can, we can face an adversity, not know what's going to happen. And uh, what, four years down the road, new class right here in Lisbon. <laughs> Moved on up to Lisbon. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. God is good. Father, we do love you today. We do praise your name today. And God, we just we just want you to receive all of our praise and worship. The worship team is really our prompters, our leaders in worship. You're the receiver of it. You're the audience. We're not the audience, Lord. You are. And we just lift our voices and praise your name today. We thank you for answers to prayer. We thank you for life changes like uh, Marissa's talking about. God, some, somebody here may, might be at that little point that, that Marissa and Jim were at uh, four and a half years ago. They might be there and, and having a tough time singing this song. But God, you, you, you're going to turn things around for people. You're going to lift people up. You change lives. You're the God of the second chance, the third chance, and hundredth chance. You never give up on us. You always are there for us. Lord, we want to lift our Haiti team up to you. Uh, sickness has hit them. I hear this morning that Fran is doing a little better, but he was very ill. Uh, yesterday, Karen has come down with it. I guess Kathy now is, has it. Jessica had it went and, and uh, has, has recovered from it, Lord. But we just pray you protect them. Protect Gwen from it, Lord. And uh, just let them uh, be able to serve, touch the Haitians' lives. Uh, they're having a great time to see on Facebook, touching people's lives, showing the ladies how to sew, uh, spending time with the children, building, finishing the house uh, that, they, that uh, has been started down there. We just pray, God, you keep them well, keep them safe, and uh, Lord, let them just let your love shine through them. Thank you that they're there uh, ministering, representing us in Haiti today. Lord, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. We just, uh, you've helped us, you've led us, you've guided us. And now, Lord, we just want to focus on what you have for us this hour, this time. Uh, Lord, I, I don't believe we, we come to church by accident. You've ordained our lives. You lead us where you want us to be. So open our ears. Let us hear from you this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn your neighbor and say, I am so glad you are here. Sunday, tearing down Easter for the program at the school, 
and uh, getting cookies, doing all the kinds of stuff. I just wonder, if you did any of that, invited people, you, you came, you stuffed it, whatever you did, I'd like you to stand up, because I want, I want to show people how much is involved, how much work's involved. So just stand up. Look at this, huh? Takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Good job. You're all great. Bond didn't stand up. You were in the worship team. You helped to finish it up, but that's all right. Put me back there, bro. <laughs> is this something I said? <laughs> God is good. God is very good. Be, be praying for our Haitian team. We've been getting messages that uh, uh, Fran and, uh, got sick. I guess Jessica got sick first, then Fran, and now Karen and Kathy. And Gwen has somehow isolated herself from this, and we're praying that she, she, uh, she, she can't afford to get sick. <laughs> She's too thin to get set. She doesn't have anything to lose. So pray for Gwen that she doesn't get it. But uh, you know what? When you're doing stuff for the Lord, Satan fights it, that we can fight it with prayer. So be praying for them. As they thank, thank you to Becky in the hospital. Yeah, Becky. Yeah. Or Mary from last week. Mary Magdalene from last Mary week. Magdalene. Exactly, yeah. She's been having some health issues. Pray for her as well. I wish I was as clever as Andrew tried to attribute to me today. If you look on your outline, he said, is it really Judas' betrayal of Judas? And he said, is this a spin on, on the message and stuff? And I know it's a typo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But that gives me an idea for a message down the road. It could be, you know, who did Judas really betray? Did he betray Jesus or did he betray himself? He thought. <laughs> did both, right? But uh, this week and next week, we're going to look at some reactions. You know, Jesus is alive after Easter, more than just Easter Sunday, more than just Resurrection Day. He's alive all the time. And so we're going to look at reactions to Jesus after Easter, betrayal, denial, or renewal. John 13 says, I am not saying these things to all of you. I know so well each of you I chose. The scripture declared, the one who shares my food has turned against me. And this will soon come true. I tell you this now so that when it happens, you will believe I am the Messiah. Truly, anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. Now, Jesus was in great anguish of spirit. And he exclaimed, the truth is one of you will betray me. Now, Jesus just came right out and said it. And he's kind of saying, you know, somebody shares my food, going to do this. And then he just said, you know what, I'm going to come right to the truth. One of you is going to betray me me. Now Jesus uh, uh, the disciples looked at each other wondering whom he could mean. One of Jesus' disciples the one Jesus loved we know that that's John was sitting next to Jesus at the table Simon Peter you know, Simon Peter's always got to be involved somehow motioned to him to ask who is going to, who would do this terrible thing. Leaning toward Jesus he asked Lord who is it? Jesus said it's the one whom I give the bread dipped in the sauce. And he, hand, and he handed it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry, do it now. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Judas was telling him to go and pay for the food or give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for me, the Son of Man, to enter into my glory, and God will receive glory because of all that has happened to me. And God will bring me into my glory soon, very soon. Dear children, how brief these moments before I go away and leave you. Then, though you, you search for me, you cannot come to me, just as I told the Jewish leaders. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. You love one another. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter said, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But can't I come now, Lord, he asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me? No, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning. You will deny three times that you even know me. Last Sunday was Easter Sunday. It was a great day. 
220 for the Easter program. That's compared to last year, we had two services here with the 205, so we had more people there. Uh, can you imagine trying to do that program that we do with the kids here with the worship team on the stage too? <laughs> Wouldn't have worked out so well. Worked out great at, at the school. It's awesome. How could we have gotten those kids on here? Uh, everyone did a great job. The nursery crew, children's church, children and adults, Jane Snyder, Becky Bishaw, and, and Jim Campbell, and, and uh, Wendy Jacobs as the centurion, and Mary Magdalene, and Simon Peter, and Pilate, respectively. Praise band leading worship and uh, playing between the songs that help the kids and, their, and adults in their program. All our nursery and kids, workers help the children prepare for the parts. Everyone who helped set up, tear down, clean up, worked behind the scenes. Everyone who was involved was awesome. Yeah. It takes a lot of people to make it happen. But it was an amazing day. We thank you very much. And last Saturday, the Easter egg hunt, this year with the bouncy houses, we did the bouncy houses to try to get people to stay around a little longer than just to do the egg hunt and be gone. Guess what? It worked. Until it started raining. <laughs> I noticed everybody kind of left when it started sprinkling. But that's all right. It worked. Got people there. We got to meet people. And it was a great, great weekend. Thanks to everyone who helped stuff the eggs and do all the stuff that needed to be done. But you know, there is life after Easter. Aren't you glad that Jesus is still alive today? He's here to meet our needs today. Like he was last week. And he wants to touch our lives in a special way today. If we'll let him do that. So let's be open to what Jesus might say and teach us today. And next Sunday, uh, as we're going to look at how Jesus can touch our lives, even when we've blown it. Especially when we've blown it, Jesus can touch us. And we're going to see two of his disciples who let Jesus down in his greatest hour of need and see their responses to that. One turned out well, one didn't turn out so well, but it was their decision and choice. Peter found forgiveness and restoration. We'll look at him next week. Judas, on the other hand, refused Jesus' forgiveness and lost out forever. What led each disciple down their particular path away from Jesus? What can we learn from these encounters with Christ? Judas' betrayal of Jesus. First of all, who was Judas really? Judas' personal history made him a unique disciple of Christ. Judas, Judas was the only disciple who was from Judea and not from Galilee. Um, move, moving here from Southern California three years ago, I ran into a couple of people who used the term to me, you're not around from around here, are you? You're not from around here, are you? You know? You get real territorial sometimes. And... Uh, I wonder if that's what the other disciples said to Judas. You're not from around here, are you? You're from up there, Jerusalem, Judea. You went to college. You got your degree. And, and thus he was probably a little more sophisticated and educated than the rest of the disciples. Not that sophistication or education necessarily makes one more likely to be a betrayer, but it certainly separated him from the other disciples who all hailed from Galilee. Maybe this made him feel like an outsider. We don't know a whole lot more about his background. But let's piece together some of the indications about his character. Since he was the treasurer slash administrator of this little band of, of disciples, we would assume that Jesus considered Judas an honest man, someone with the gift of administration, as Jesus wouldn't have had him doing things he wasn't qualified for, gives us the gifts that we have, and he puts us in the places he wants us to be. Uh, he probably was looked up to and respected and uh, with his perceived abilities. Judas, no doubt, was a prudent man, made wise decisions at the beginning with his walk, in his walk with Christ. However, we may see these gifts and great abilities are the very things that might have led Judas into trouble when he got his eyes off Jesus. You see, Judas' attitude about Jesus. Let's take a look at that, Judas' attitude. He seemed to be looking for an earthly Messiah or deliverer of the Jewish people. No doubt all the disciples, when Jesus called them to follow him, felt like he was going to make a big change right here on earth. 
where they're looking for a deliverer. They're looking for a Messiah. They're looking for someone to overthrow the Roman government. They're looking for another King David, the warrior king, to fight for them. And I'm sure all of them were looking at that when they signed the Zealot and others that uh, accepted Jesus' call to be a disciple. But Judas kind of got stuck there. The rest of the disciples, as Jesus taught them and lived with them for three years, could see that Jesus was talking about something different. A spiritual kingdom. A kingdom that is going to be here and everywhere and ultimately end in heaven. Uh, they, when they, they, they all looked at him that way and they started following him. But Jesus, the Jews never left that mode. He wanted to share in this earthly kingdom and be part of the overthrow of the Roman Empire. With Jesus, he no doubt experienced and enjoyed the power over demons and everything else that Jesus gave his disciples. He saw even the winds and waves obey his master's commands. I'm sure down somewhere in Judas, he was thinking, wow, Jesus, we need to take this show on the road. We need to get up to Jerusalem, where the real power of influence is, and we need to let, you, let people know you up there. If we're going to, you know, change the world, we got to get up there. You kind of like going to Washington, D.C. here, you know? That's where the power is. That's where the, it is, and, and we're going to have to do that. He seemed to start out so good as a disciple, but he didn't follow through in accepting Jesus' teachings and mature into discipleship as the other 11 did. He seemed to be more like the people that were looking for physical food in John chapter 6. And, you know, Jesus had a great following. He'd done some miracles, fed the 5,000, and, and, and all of a sudden he starts teaching, I am the bread of life. You're going to have to eat me. And the people are like, well, this is a hard teaching. I don't understand this so much. And they said the crowd started to leave. And, and Jesus turned to his side and said, are you going to leave me too? And they said, well, where would we go? But, but Judas somehow is stuck in that format. Started off good, but didn't mature. He seemed to be like these people looking for victory and food. Second, let's look at the process of Judas' deny, or betrayal. And, and all the other disciples, like all the other disciples in the beginning, Judas was looking for an earthly leader. The deliverer Israel, to deliver Israel from the Romans. One who would set them free from Caesar. Judas was excited about the potential personal power and tremendous growth in Jesus' following. Judas, no doubt, became confused over Jesus' spiritual teachings about the kingdom of God. And when Jesus began to teach the deeper, harder truths about him being the bread of life, people must have been concerned about him eating, them, eating him as spiritual food than chasing physical food. Many began to drift. Jesus said in John 6, uh, 64, but some of you don't believe me. And Jesus already knew from the beginning who didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. Jesus' refusal to go to Jerusalem earlier to build up his exposure and following uh, probably frustrated Judas. How can we gain enough political clout to take over, Jesus? Doesn't go for it. Judas just doesn't understand. Judas wanted to see Jesus increase earthly kingdom when Jesus was talking more and more about God's kingdom, a spiritual kingdom. Judas secondly got frustrated when things started to turn bad, when things started to backfire. John the Baptist is beheaded. Followers start deserting Jesus. Jesus increasingly talks about suffering and death. What kind of king, what kind of deliverer talks about suffering and dying on a cross? Judas is frustrated. Judas made an inward decision not to be committed. He may have been jealous over not being part of the big three, Peter, James, and John. I'm sure Judas felt like, what am I, a chopped liver? I'm the treasurer. I'm the administrator. Without me, you guys would be a disorganized bunch of fishermen. That's what you are. Why aren't I in on the big three, Peter, James, and John? A little bit of jealousy maybe crept in there. You feel like, well, what about me? Huh? Aren't I important too? Maybe he's disappointed. His ambitions weren't being fulfilled. The earthly kingdom isn't isn't what it uh, isn't uh, 
being established. Jesus' teachings are turning him off more and more. His love and devotion for Jesus are slowly turning into bitterness, hatred, betrayal. As he is forced to live and act like someone he's not. All of a sudden, somewhere along the line, he changed it. He's not really a disciple. He's not a learner anymore. He's just part of a group. But he's a fake. And that had, to, that had to ostracize him even more, his own feelings about that. Isn't this where some people come in to, to the body of Christ today? They miss the point of God's work of salvation through the church. Get their eyes on what they think is important. When things don't go their way, they tend to get bitter, turned off, rather than seeing things through the kingdom's eyes, through growth. And building God's kingdom. And next we see important, kind of an interesting scripture here. It says, Satan enters Judas' life. In uh, Luke 22, verses 3 to 6. And then Satan entered into Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve disciples. And he went over to the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted that he was ready to help them. And they promised him a reward. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so they could arrest him quietly when all the people weren't around. Now they've been looking for this. The temple leaders and Pharisees have been looking for this opportunity. But if you read the New Testament, you realize it's that we should arrest him again. Now look at on Palm Sunday, he's going into Jerusalem being praised and all that. They're saying we should arrest him, we should get him out of here. But what are we going to do with all these people? You know? He's, he's, you know, they're going to attack us. They're going to turn on us if we get him. And so they were looking for a way to, when's he going to be alone? When's he going to be all by himself or just with his disciples that we can get him? And now Judas hands them that opportunity and says, hey, I want to betray him. Uh, I'm not with him anymore. Let's talk about this. So he's going to get a reward. Judas realized Jesus was going to die. Here's his gift of, here his gift of administration kicks in. Remember I said the very strengths that he had might have been what led him down the wrong path? You know, he, he, he's the administrator. He wants to make things work. Maybe I can broker how this goes down. Maybe I can force Jesus' hand. I'm sure that if they come to arrest him, he'll rise up and fight him, and I'll force his hand at it. Thinking like an administrator. How can I orchestrate this? How can I make this happen? At least I'll get something out of three years of following Jesus. And he made the betrayer's deal with the Pharisees. Now, G now Judas moves full bore into the life of the hypocrite. Now he set the, he set the trap. He's going to betray him. Now he's just looking for the opportunity. And here they are in the upper room. Can you imagine what's going through his mind as Jesus is loving his disciples, washing their feet, they're celebrating the Passover together. The fatal decision has been made. He won't totally commit to Christ. And he now is rather destroyed, or destroy rather than build up the body of Christ. He sits unmoved by Jesus' demonstration of love of washing his disciples' feet at the Last Supper. He won't change his plan, even though Jesus reaches out to him. He gives him the bread. He's set. He leaves the Passover and goes out. And what does it say? He went out, and it was night. Well, it was physical night for sure. But for Judas, he went out, and it was a spiritual darkness. It was a spiritual night that he went into. Away from Jesus, away from the disciples of the body of Christ. Out on his own to be destroyed. Folks, as the body of Christ, we need each other. And when we get something between us and the body and we kind of push ourselves off all by ourselves and we're like, you know what, I'm going to just be my own thing. I'm going to be an island. Well, you know, sharks like to swarm around the island. And Satan comes after us. We need, Jesus uses the, the analogy of he's the shepherd and we're the sheep. And sheep aren't very smart. They'll follow the shepherd. It doesn't take a lot of shepherds. It takes one shepherd and one good sheep dog to hurt a whole bunch of sheep. I tried doing that with cats, it doesn't work so well. But sheep will follow the leader. And where's the sheep get in trouble? When they get off from the flock. When they get off by themselves. When they let something come between them. When they let little silly little pettiness get in the way. And you know, most most conflicts that arise anywhere in anybody's lives, 
don't they usually start on something kind of stupid, petty, builds up, builds up, and pretty soon we find ourselves, well, I don't fit there, I don't, you know, I'm back away. Don't do that. That's where Satan is going to nail us. He went out, it was night, the blackest night of all. Out, uh, away from Jesus, away from the disciples, the body of Christ, out on his own to be destroyed, out into the night. And then Judas betrays Jesus. Still the hypocrite comes in ahead of the soldiers in an attempt to trick Jesus and his disciples. And he said, the one I greet with a kiss is going to be Jesus. And so he did. Judas does have a change of heart, and, or change of mind. After he's done this, he has a change of mind, but Judas doesn't have a change of heart. He realizes this is a big mistake. Jesus didn't stand up for himself. What I thought might happen didn't happen. I should have never done this. And he changed his mind. But we don't see a heart change. He tries to return the money and, and reverse the deed, but it's too late. He finds no peace of heart and mind and forgiveness since he won't ask for any. And Judas plunges himself out into eternity, taking his life by hanging himself. Now let's think about for a moment, where could Judas have reversed his course with death? Several places along the way, uh, when he realized first that Jesus was speaking of the spiritual kingdom. That's where I think it started. Jesus talking spiritual, he stays with the earthly, with the mighty kingdom. He could have accepted this instead of fighting it. He could have kept his eyes on Jesus instead of his dream of the kingdom he wanted to build. He should have kept his eyes on Jesus and, <clears throat> Jesus, what kingdom are you building? I want to build that one. I want to be involved in that kingdom. I want to reach lost people, not just create something for ourselves where we can be powerful. By keeping his eyes on Jesus instead of power and ambition, or even the other disciples, Peter, James, and John, by saying, no to temptation by confessing his sin even before the betrayal. It's never too late for forgiveness. God is always willing to forgive. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. Anywhere along the way, by looking to Jesus as his Savior and Lord, instead of looking at Jesus as an earthly king or deliverer, could have changed it for him. Judas' betrayal was a choice of his will. Somewhere along the line, he decided, I'm doing this. I'm not doing that. And followed that trail. How does this apply to us? Do we ever find ourselves missing the point of Christianity? Do we ever find ourselves wanting to do it our way? And our vision and our thing? Do we... Do we want power for our own decisions instead of to do God's will and work? Do we get our eyes on the wrong things? It's very easy to get our eyes off of Jesus and on to people. You know, uh, uh, a friend of mine had a, um, one of the former uh, TV evangelists, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the name right now, I'm trying to come up with something and it's not coming. But one of the one of the big evangelists that fell years ago um, is hmm? no, no, that's not. <laughs> well, not there. His his I'll get it. It'll come later this afternoon sometime when I'm having lunch. But the daughter, the 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 the, uh, the leader, and the son was high in in uh, building this kick the the uh, ministry, and the son married this gal, and years later, he divorced her, and his dad said it was okay, he divorced her, and got remarried, and she wrote a book about that, and uh, she happened to, her, her, her mother happened to attend my friend's church in, in uh, Portland, and he got to meet her, talk with her, Roberts. Oral Roberts, Richard Roberts, the first Mrs. Richard Roberts. And she, she said this. She said, you know, there was a point in our ministry 
where we were building Jesus' kingdom. And we were all about saving souls. And she said, then there was a point where something switched and we started building Oral Roberts' kingdom. And everything we did was to build that up instead of building up Christ. That's the point where Judas was. Building this up, building it up. Now, Oral Roberts had repentance and there was change and I mean, things changed for him as well so I think he came back around. But at that point, that's where, he, that's where she was. That's where Judas was. On such a good track. On such a good way. And all of a sudden, instead of building God's kingdom, the spiritual kingdom, he wanted to build his kingdom. He wanted Jesus to be an earthly leader that he could be the administrator for, that he could be the treasurer for this bigger kingdom. Get our eyes on the wrong things. We can get them off of Jesus and not the people. We find ourselves as hypocrites like Judas, playing a role, pretending to be something we're not. It's too late for Judas, but the good news is it's never too late for us. When we stumble, when we fall, Jesus is always there waiting for us. We don't have to walk in the wrong trail. And, and we've talked about the Word of God is to keep us on the right path. And when we get off, it brings us back. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scriptures used to do that. Keep us on the track. When we get off, it corrects us and brings us back. Jesus is always saying, come back. Life happens. Disappointments come. We get problems with people sometimes. And, and, and sometimes, you know, when you have a problem with somebody, don't they get really stupid in your mind? I mean, how could they think that? How could they disagree with me? How, how, you know? I mean, we justify ourselves. We get all built up and like, why can't they go along with the program here? What's going on? We make up this huge thing. And if we're not careful, get our eyes off Jesus. Get our eyes off reaching people for Christ. And get them on to surface silly things that take that place. And that leads us away. Now we're not going to be like Judas and go out and hang ourselves. But we sure can make our life miserable. Make it miserable for others around us sometimes. So let's learn from Judas. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep the main thing the main thing. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus dying on the cross and rising again. And being our Lord and Savior. And he's told us Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, to reach people for Jesus. And not get caught up in the things that will. Don't get your eyes on people. Don't get your eyes on me. Don't get your eyes on anybody but Jesus. Because we're all people. We all make mistakes. We all blow it. We all make silly decisions sometimes. I'm the leader of that path. So don't get your eyes on me. Get them on Jesus. And when you see me make a mistake and blow it, pray for me. <laughs> That's what we do for each other. We build each other up. We pray for each other. But not go the route that Jesus went. Doesn't matter where we've been. Doesn't matter what we've done. Jesus stands ready to give us forgiveness. Second chance. Third, fourth, hundredth chance. We just have to turn and return <clears throat> to Him and ask for it. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for examples in your word, and this one happens to be a really negative example. The fact that the, the, the name Judas is not, not a popular name. We, we don't read in the papers that somebody had a baby and named him Judas. It's become a name of, of ill repute, a negative thought when we hear that name, a betrayer. Someone who can't be trusted. But God, when we're honest with ourselves, we all fall short. We all stumble. We all betray sometimes. In those points, we need your forgiveness. We need your cleansing. And we need God to get in the center of the herd of sheep. <laughs> Keep us together, pull us together 
let us surround each other and not be peeled off by ourselves somewhere and become that lost sheep that the bear might go after, the lion might go after, or the coyote would go after here in North Country. Let us not let anything pull us away from you, first of all, and from your body that you want us to be a part of. We're all a member of it. We all have a function in it. Keep us close to you. And Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts today. If there's any that would just say, you know, I see myself going down a road here, not near where Judas is, but I can see if I keep going down this road, I'm pulling farther away, I'm kind of getting frustrated or discontent. Let us turn that discontent and frustration back to surrender to you and ask you, Lord, how we can be a better part of your kingdom and how we can receive your forgiveness by asking for it today. So Lord, if there's anyone here, let them just in their heart pray, Lord Jesus, I don't want to walk away from you. I don't want to walk away from your kingdom. Forgive me for letting things slip in between me and you and me and your people. Forgive me for letting disagreements and disappointments push me away. I surrender those to you and I turn and look full on you. My eyes are on you, Jesus. Forgive me for letting them drift to other things. Ask Jesus to do that and stay on the track that leads us to where Jesus wants us to be in the center of his will and claim to his body here on earth, get involved in the body of Christ. We love you. We need you. Go with us this week. Help us to share your love with those we come in contact with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's some contact cards or information cards there in the pew. And if you're new to us, we'd love to have your address. We send out an email weekly update of what goes on in our church. Give us that. Um, your information, we'd love to be in contact with you. Have you be in contact with us. If you don't have a church, uh, we'd love to have you become part of ours. And uh, let's build his kingdom. Easter's over, but he's still alive. And he's still working. And by the way, we have an athlete in our midst as well. Wendy Jacobs ran a half marathon yesterday. What's your, what's your, what's your time? Is, it, is that where you're going for? Is that good? Yeah. Close. Good job, Wendy. 13 miles. You're about 13 miles. 13.1 miles. Exactly half a marathon. I forgot to talk about Wendy here. Yes, it would be exactly right. Good job. Good job. When you got sick here in the process of training for this, I wasn't quite sure she was going to make it, but we all know Wendy. She's going to make it. She had to Huh? God gave him strength, but we're probably done. Yeah, good job. Did John run with you, Pastor John? What a loser. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Some are determined to do what they set out to do. Others fall by the wayside. <laughs> Pastor John, by the way, is in Syracuse this weekend. He has an opportunity there for ministry. You know that he's. Uh, moving on in ministry, and, and uh, he had an opportunity to uh, spend some time with some church planning, things going on in Syracuse, <coughs> and was trying to figure out how we could, could observe all of that, and I said, go, go, You're, you need to look, you need to look, so he's down there, pray for him, pray for John and James, uh, church planners at heart, and uh, pray that they get in the right place to do that, and this is looking real promising, this opportunity there, so I pray for that. So pray for us. We have our grandchildren this weekend. We're we'll babysitting for and we are taking them back to Syracuse to meet their parents, the Lord willing, this afternoon. <laughs> we love our grandchildren. And I was gone all day yesterday. Did your grandma do okay? Did you? Pretty good. This is our oldest grandson on the East Coast, Ashley. And he's lucky enough to be old enough to have to sit up here and listen to Grandpa. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings if you're here for the first time or don't 
you feel like you earn it, but you don't feel like you have to give, you give us the Lord as blessed. We'll build his kingdom. That's our sister. Lord, thank you so much for your love, grace, and mercy in our lives. When we give our tithes to you, Lord, it feels like not a lot. But that's what you taught us to do. It represents our all. Our all is yours. And we give to you our tithes and offerings to build your kingdom here and in Haiti, in the Czech Republic, and around the world, those ministries that we support. We love you. Thank you so much for all you do for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I think we'll stand and try to do two things at once. Pass that play. Sing our closing. Thank you.